what's up beautiful people welcome to the channel so this morning i was playing basketball at the gym and someone thought it would be a good idea to elbow me right in the mouth so um i got a hole on my lip in two places so if you see me bleeding profusely let me know i got something for that but um the show is still gonna be watched today ted lasso season two i couldn't wait to start this season one was amazing through a stroke of luck one of my amazing patreons put me on ted lasso and now it's like my favorite thing on tv show or movie i'm happy to be here sharing season two with you guys thank you for all the love you guys have been showing on youtube on this ted lasso reactions and on patreon too all of you that came over to patreon to support me financially and also get the early reactions thank you thank you so much i feel like the community and just the good vibes of this era of my youtube channel with doing tv shows and shows like ted lasso i feel like is indicative of the good vibes that comes off the show <laughs> believe it or not you know the comments uh is like some of the beautiful most beautiful comment session i've seen in in my channel i just love the mutual respect and love for the craft for the reaction the engagement i appreciate it i appreciate it so so much it means a lot to me seeing all your comments and all our interactions and um yeah i think that works well for an intro <laughs> let's get into episode one and we're in the final minute of added time two goals apiece oh damn sanya switches play he finds <laughs> nade the great <laughs> Let's go. Rojas. Oh yeah, they're relegated. <laughs> I always love the commentators. Pray. Yeah, of course. But the witch god and what language? There you go. Make a wish, baby. Danny. Shout out to all of you that fed me so much information about Danny Rojas' character and how he was an actual football player. See, the community is dope. <clears throat> you guys are just giving me all the info. Um, it's good. To, it's good to know that he was a uh, an actual player. Look at Rebecca. She's all in for the team now. Is that a bird? Howling his encouragement. Football is life. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Sam, I miss all the boys. Football is life. It's life, baby. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's get it. Don't tell me the bird. That's a beautiful shot right there. No. Oh. I promise that's not what I wished for. <laughs> Nate. <laughs> Why are we going to go start the season like that, man? What the hell? You don't think the people will hate us because of it, do you? Oh, they will. The internet. Twitter is going bonkers, look. God, did we really make my- Haha, <laughs> make Malcolm Jordan cry. Uh, something I just peeped from this beginning. This is the first time everybody is on one accord. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the first time. Well, maybe the last episodes of last season. But, yeah. Because I feel like after um, Rebecca came out to Ted and you know all the loose ends were tied from season one i feel like this is the first time we're seeing the squad like come out in full force full unity i mean with higgins uh kaylee rebecca everybody i wanted to say jamie but jamie ain't here no more did you write a statement for ted yeah i did he's got it covered okay <laughs> coach lasso how are you feeling about the team's efforts today but I feel like everyone played their hearts out, you know, especially Sam. Fill that giant Roy Kent void. Oh, oh yeah, Roy's gone. Will you hit the panic button? Well, Mark, Shit. two buttons I never like to hit. Yeah. Uh, what about this fella? Right? Ted with the lines, man. Trent Krim. Yeah. <laughs> the dog Danny Rojas killed today. Killed? Trent Krim, bringing that heat. As always. Wow, the dog died. I do remember being afraid of dogs while growing up, though. Like, if I yeah. was at a friend's house for a sleepover or something, They'd have to keep their family dog. <laughs> His wife passed away. Mm. He was gonna stop taking care of their dog. Shit. Same one that bit me. And so I started looking after him, him taking him on walks, playing fetch, all that fun stuff. That's Eventually, so sweet. And then a year or so after that, we had to put Hank to sleep. Mm. It's funny to think about the things in your life that can make you cry just knowing that they existed. What the f? 
Fuck, man. This episode just started. Helps get from one place to a better one. Jesus Christ, Ted. We gonna miss around here a whole bunch. Man. Trent is in love with you, my boy. The crazy thing is, like, a simple answer would have su sufficed. You know what I'm saying? But not for our boy Ted, man. That's a beautiful story, too. Like, as he was just talking about that in my head, I'm like, I would pay for Ted to <laughs> do an audiobook <laughs> that's just filled with uh, just endless stories. That was beautiful. Oh, it, it, it seems like season two, they're going to come with the heat. They're going to come with the feels, just like Trent from The Independent. I just hope he's not being too hard on himself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the contrast the contrast with the comedy and the emotions is perfect what you doing watching the head of me it ain't good football is life right i know it used to be <laughs> hit the panic button <laughs> let's go ahead and give danny a little bit of space right now yeah Hey, y'all kick their butts from soup to nuts. Don't worry, we're gonna get a W soon. We'll see goldfish on Monday. Goldfish. goldfish. My means to forget our mistakes and failures. But I didn't make any mistake. Only you played poorly. Oh. Do we have another Danny? Jan Mas <laughs> is not being rude. He's just being Dutch. Oh, oh, sure. oh. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Aww. It's just, it's my mum's 50th birthday. Oh, what position does your mum play on the team again? It's Fuck. okay. Well, tell your mom a happy birthday from all of us. Nate. Nate, to relax. You, you gotta stay on him. Ooh, thanks. Rebecca. That's odd. Look at her serving Higgins. Sent food delivery from our rivals over at Brentford FC. That's nice. What kind of food? Thai. Oh, now I get it. Dead. What do you say to a cocktail, coach? Yes, please. I was about to say, Rebecca is cracking jokes now. See, this is what I meant earlier when I said, like, they seem like an actual unit right now. Because, like, in season one, you wouldn't catch uh, Rebecca, like, having drinks with Higgins, you know? And it just took me back to that conversation when, like, she exploded on Higgins. And that was so deep, man. But I'm glad they got over it. And, like, seeing all of them just, like, having little parties and cocktail meetings, it's, it's beautiful to watch, man. Well, Keely, I feel like bigger loser than the biggest loser from the biggest loser. Oh, <clears throat> look on the bright side, Ted. We are still undefeated. Thank you. That's a fact. Oh, oh my God. <gasps> oh, is that him? Come yes, on. Yes, 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 yes. Him? And? I want to know who him is. Gentleman suitor. I've gone out with a few times. <laughs> nice. Little girl talk. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Ted is just like me for real. Like, spill the tea, please, man. Y'all getting excited like this? <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of this. It's kind of like when my wife is watching something that I am not interested in, but then you start overhearing how spicy the shit is or how good the topic is. A good example is, if you know this, let me know in the comments. Uh, there's this lady called uh, Brittany Broski. And like, she's a, I think she's a comedian, but she's also just like a wholesome woman. And like her comedy is not my type of comedy. So anytime my wife shows me a video of her, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But sometimes some of the discussions, I just feel myself, my ear just inching closer and closer to my wife's phone. <laughs> I just thought of that when, like, I'm like Ted for real. Like, you, you guys are getting excited over a dude. Like, let me see. Like, let me see a picture. What's his name? <laughs> Are you guys up for a double date next week? Let him prove his mettle. Lately. Can you ask Roy if he's free? Oh, he's free. Don't worry about that. Okay. Oi! You listen to me! Oh, he got a full beard too! Because today... Again, you guys told me that Roy is actually a writer on the show that sent his tapes to the other, like, writers. Or was it? Or sent it to the director? Because he was like, I'm Roy, and he got it. It makes me look at him so much different now. Like, that's that was freaking amazing. You all played like a bunch of little pricks! <laughs> Wait to put your body on the line out there. Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> Off you go. This is perfect for him. They're eight years old. You can't call them little pricks. Aww. Me? Yeah, let's go. 
They're so perfect. I'd love to see if we could do some double date action next week. Fucking hell. <laughs> Sky Sports reached out again. No. I think it's a good idea. Your retirement press conference. <laughs> She's right in the tab. People loved it. It's so your way of alleviating my embarrassment. Tell me how many millions of people have seen me look like a knob. I think that makes total sense that uh, he's not taking uh, retirement too gracefully. I mean, who would, man? It's tough. I mean, you watch all the greats. Um, whenever they have their like retirement ceremony like it's 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 difficult it's something that's probably been your life since you were freaking 16 or so you know from high school so yeah because i i felt that when ted was uh mentioning all the alias he put his ticket on there so he can come to the game um i thought about it uh, oh he's probably just trying to stay away not because you know it's still a touchy subject for him i like that um, I feel like the the writers in this show they don't spare any any possibility to make a storyline out of human emotion or situation, no matter how little like they go for it, like they utilize it. Um, I like this a lot. I'd rather shit out my own mouth than do that shit. Or oh, she's right in the oh, tabs. <laughs> Wait, please, where are we at now? Thousand two hundred and thirty six pounds. Impressive. At this point, you're gonna get her through college. Kick to put Richmond in the wing column for the first. Danny, I swear to God, if you kill another animal, adorable goalkeeper. Kingsmanship from the keeper. Is <laughs> with his head. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, I did. I haven't seen someone that disappointed to see me since I wore a red baseball cap to a Planned Parenthood fundraiser. Sorry, Ted. I wish I was Keely three, four times a day. There you go. Thank you. Let me guess, you got a fever for the flavor little girl talk, don't you? Mm -hmm. Shoot, let me take a crack at it. Really? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Okay, what the hell? Uh, so this... I'm ready. I've been seeing John. Stamos? No, his name's John Wings Knight, but that's not the point. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a wonderful man. He's very handsome. Uh, She's so... Not shy. Mm, is he butterfly. Uh, yes. I love it. Let's keep going. Right, so... <clears throat> Ooh, I love that one because I feel like in the episode that just dropped on YouTube, before you guys on Patreon, you must have seen it a while ago, where um, I kind of talked about um, a past um, partner of mine who uh, told me that, like, Franklin, sometimes when I tell you something is wrong, I just want you to be in listen mode and just be sad with me for a little bit. Uh, and, you know, my trauma tends to fight that in the sense that we can be sad for a little bit, but how are we gonna like solve this or prevent this from happening again? Which I ended up finding out that can be a little problematic and like worked on improving in that aspect of my life. So like him bringing this up here is so clutch cause that's partially what happened with his relationship, no? Like him being, um, one of you in the comment told me it was a, is it toxic optimism or toxic positivity? Something like that. Um, yeah, he just brought that up that like, you know, sometimes I just got to listen and let you talk over what you got to talk about and like feel good about it. Yes. Learning on the fly. So uh, I love that connection from uh, season one. Okay. Ooh. She's so giddy about it. I'm, late, fellas. I'm, I'm happy for her, though. My favorite's the blue, but I think they all kind of rock. What do you guys think? <laughs> you go, Ted. What's wrong? He's underselling. We have a Shakespearean fucking tragedy. Danny? Oh, he's terrified. I mean, he missed. He got a mental block. Wow. We're watching the end of someone's career. Not now, Jan. Yan is way too honest. <laughs> that wasn't your fault. Not too dissimilar mm. from those seen throughout Paul Thomas Anderson's 1999 Opus Magnolia. The tragic occurrence. One time thing. Hey, fellas, ladder from Midnight Poutine. I know they're playing it off as comedy, but like, that's some real trauma from. All right, Danny. Okay, coach. From ending that dog yeah. right there. Get the ball, Danny. Is this one of their plays? Oh. <laughs> I think we already know what it is, don't we, coach? What are you talking about, Willis? The dog. Which is why I wrote it down. What the is that? Yips. Shh. What are the yips? Shh. We don't <laughs> say the Y word out loud, you understand? 
I want to know what it is. An athlete suddenly can't do the basic fundamentals of their sport. I just noticed Beard has a lisp. I never noticed, but I feel like this is the first time he's just been focused on him. Interesting. Ted, what are your thoughts on therapy? Touche. General apprehension and a modest Midwestern skepticism? Why do you ask? Well, maybe we should bring in a sports psychologist. Interesting. It's not a bad idea, Coach. Yeah, let's do it. Balls. <laughs> and when he bends over, give him a knee to the nose and be done with it. Because screw this guy. Is this him? I was thinking, but it's Martin Short. <laughs> sure enough, there it was, wedged between the couch cushions. Martin Short's wallet. Yeah, I'm feeling like Roy right now. Me... Another one, please. <laughs> God, I never knew that. <laughs> This actor is so good. Even before a word is said about John, her new, like, interest, you can already see in Roy's face, like, like, this dude ain't it. <laughs> and Kaylee is out here trying to be the supportive best friend, laughing at his jokes that are the farthest things from funny or his explanation. So I just wanted to point out they're good acting. And, you know, Rebecca, maybe this is not the one, but let's not judge a book by its cover. Let's, let's, let's dig deeper. But I just wanted to mention how good their acting is right there, where, like, you can almost tell what they're feeling. But who cares about Martin Short when you're sitting next to, he's here, he's there, he's every fucking where. Roy Kent. <laughs> Roy Kent. John's football mad. Oh, terrific. And how different your life must be now. Oh, he you does not want to talk right about that. Oh, you know, busy, busy. I'm actually doing a bit of coaching at the moment. We've got a cup final next week. West London under nine girls. He's actually had an offer from Sky Sports to be a pundit. I love that idea. He does not want that. It must have been super weird afterwards, though, right? I'm going to need two more of these, please. Shame what happened to Earl. Him and his owner, Nigel, used to come in here all the time. I love her. I'm all for whatever it takes to help Danny get back to being a hunter. The whole idea of bringing in someone from the outside to help us get him there, I don't know, it just kind of puts a little knot in my belly. I'm like, mm. trust therapists? Interesting. When Michelle and I did couples therapy, it was mm. with this therapist she'd been going to for a while. Like, I was going in there not to be listened to, rather just to hear about all the things I've been doing wrong. Mm. Do you remember what you said when I got dumped by that cruise ship dancer and swore I would never date another dancer again? Yo. <laughs> Two quick ones. Uh, the moment Ted started talking about his distrust of therapists, my mind immediately went to couples therapy. And obviously, like, no one loves being told what they're doing wrong, you know? Uh, it takes a lot of humility to get that, like, to really do that introspection and be like, okay, you guys are right. I'm on some bullshit and fix this. So, like, I get his distrust for therapy. And what he said made sense. He felt like he was being told all the wrong things but not being listened to which is like fair um but some of you told me or reminded me how i thought in episode one how i thought beard was the normal one <laughs> but through that the second half of season one all the nasty weird shit like beard started saying that felt like it wasn't enough like i needed more of the story just it was hilarious to know that like i was so wrong about him being the weird one about him being the normal one and like again we just have an example like exotic dancer never to date one again it's like this man has seen some things all people are different pe mm. i said that mm -hmm. you went out with another dancer though yeah many too many Beardy! Charming as ever. I love her outfit. Are you sure you don't want to come back tomorrow? Lunch later this week? Perfect. Aww. Right. Oh. <laughs> he seems I. Right. I think he's a really good match. He's not shy. I love that about him. Totally. Fucking hell. <laughs> Is there a problem? <laughs> Tell the truth. He's fine. It's not about him. It's about why the fuck you think he deserves you. Ooh. You just have someone who makes you feel like you've been struck by fucking lightning. Ooh. For fine. Ooh. <laughs> Roy motherfucking Kent. Yo, my single people out there hope we're taking notes. Ooh. That's what I'm talking about, man. See, this is what happens when you got a squad behind you. Don't settle for motherfucking fine.
yeah 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 retweets that coming from roy i mean not that that's surprising but like i didn't expect that i, I just expected him to just trash the guy and just say the guy is average but like him giving rebecca that agency that yo like it's not about him like it's about you like settling for someone that is just fine that i bet she feels weirdly empowered <laughs> i like that i like that yeah because i feel like there's something deeper here too because it's like when you have been through shit and so much abuse less abuse or less shit feels amazing you know what i'm saying not saying he's abusive or he's bad but like you know there's something on the other spectrum from what your husband was you know and right now you're settling for right in the middle which is fine but sky's the limit baby sky's the limit and i know there's a lot of context there like what um shorty said kaylee about like age appropriate and like financial appropriate and compatibility and i know all that plays a factor but shout out to roy man being a wing man oh, wow. you guys got yeah. some time sorry you do dr sharon fieldstone she's going to be looking after danny this is hey doc Nathan, coach beard and ted lasso so i understand that danny has developed a case of the yips <laughs> hey. <laughs> she said it. Well, Doc, we don't like using that word around here. It's a superstition. They are a mental condition, one that can be fixed with discipline, not denial. Then you're pretty mm. confident that you can help us out with Danny, huh? Are you good at your job? Are you good at your job, yes or no? Yes. I'm twice as good at mine. She. Talk to him, sis. We're very lucky to have you. Thank you. That's good to know. Thank you for coming here. <laughs> Every character in this show is just... The casting is amazing. This is Dr. Sharon Fieldstone. Nice to meet you, Danny. Let's go. Like a murderer. Damn. I mean, this is some heavy shit, so I'm glad they're uh, taking it seriously. And it's not just a haha -ha joke. <laughs> okay. Bilingual, too. You okay? Oh, yeah. This is going to be perfect. Yeah, there's a problem. He goes, it's all right, it's all right. I know the choreographer. Guess who it was? Starting to hit. She's noticing. You know, my friend Flo once told me that intimacy was all about leaving yourself open to being attacked. Mm. I need to be brave enough to let someone wonderful love me without fear of being hurt and without fear of being safe. Her acting, bruh. Are you breaking up with me? I actually didn't know I was going to no, no, do no, that. No, 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 it's all right. Mwah. Mwah. Sir, I'm sorry, but for 90% of your screen time, you have been talking about yourself. Not once did you inquire about her or anything. So I'm glad she let you down gently, uh, quite poetically, might I add. What she just noticed about everyone in the restaurant is so real. I've been married for five years and known my wife for six and a half, almost seven. And like, this is 29 year old Frank. Prior to like being with my wife, uh, knowing her is like, I've grown a lot from there. But what I'm trying to say is like, sometimes I just think like when I hear some friends of mine or some colleagues talk about like their relationship or like, how the landscape of being single is right now. I, <laughs> I get so scared. <laughs> I freak out because I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all struggling right now. Uh, not making jokes, but obviously like what she's saying about like, just the, like the anxiety of just being vulnerable and like finding, going through everyone to find who is right for you or who is kind to you or good for you is like man like having to go through that again yeesh you know what i'm saying so i i love that scene the way they visualize it too like with the camera like focusing on different people in the restaurant i'm like oh oh 
It's some good shit. No, 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 no. Dani Rojas, Rojas, Dani Rojas. Oh, wow. Coaches. May I join the drill? You got it, coach. After one session, oh. hey, she says she's twice as good at her job. I think Ted should have a session with her. You got this, Danny. Sheesh. It's gonna. Shit. <laughs> he even scored. What a curve. She's like, my job is done. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, but hold on a sec. Um, I'm just curious. What did she, um, yeah, I mean, what ended up helping you? Wouldn't you want to know? Sharon, help me remember that even though football is like, football is also dead. Mm. And that football is football too. I don't know, man. I feel this theme of um, what I spoke about earlier, about like that toxic um, positivity or toxic optimism. I mean, Ted is not the type to shy away from hard topics. But like overall, I feel like there's a through line with... <clears throat> what he just said about the doctor that football is also death and what she also said when she came into his office like uh we have to address it and not ignore it um it reminds me of a show that i was watching where there was this friend group that the leader of the group is so against negativity that she wouldn't even allow anybody in the group talk about their hardships you know because she, she doesn't want to feel bad, but like that was toxic and it was just eating them all alive. You know what I'm saying? So I hope uh, Ted gets an appointment uh, with the doctor because th that could do a lot of things. He could get over his fear for his fear of uh, therapy and also maybe it could help him overcome some of the you know, remnants of some of the issues he had in his marriage, you know? You know what, I'm gonna go upstairs, thank the good doc before she splits it. She's amazing. <laughs> Lust conquers all. Will it be Grimsby's top makeup <laughs> counter associate? Oh, Roy. Oh, shut up, you slag. <laughs> 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 Hello? God, I love him. <sighs> Wow, Roy. Roy. Rose, please, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Your squad is turning on you. Ever since I said it, uh, my mind has just been telling me to just elaborate on my point. When I said it's hard out there for singles or people trying to find love, trust me, I wasn't trying to be demeaning or I wasn't trying to be, what's the term, nihilistic. What I always tell like some of my friends or homies or people who feel like it's hard to find love or there ain't good people out there is like look at yourself like if you consider yourself like a good person like you love yourself or you're learning to love yourself and you feel like you would love someone to like like you to love you i always tell uh people like um you're a good person you consider yourself a good person like there's no reason to think they're not good people like you out there or great people like you out there you know just like everything the sauce is just like finding them and like being open kind of like um rebecca said so i just wanted to clarify i wasn't trying to be a dick and be like oh i'm married but people are out here struggling to find love no never that never that uh you know, uh, Ted Lasso just has this beautiful way of starting uh, seasons. Because, like, watching season one, episode one, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's a wrap. Oh, yeah. Like, that. Th this is my thing. So, like, just a few things. I know this is probably going to be the longest episode reaction I've done. It's almost an hour uh, for an episode that is, like, 30 minutes. But um so i talked about everything in this episode but i just love that they're bringing some storylines from season one over here i'm seeing how like our characters are evolving and improving um there's also they're also leaving some breadcrumbs of things we can look forward to in the future 
like some more growth for ted and his character with the whole thing with uh therapy and i hope he gets like a session and you know freaking roy like telling rebecca like again rebecca is still my favorite character followed by ted and who's my third favorite character maybe higgins sam I don't know, but Roy is getting up there, man. After this episode, Roy might be even over Ted. Nah. After that Ted's conversation with Rebecca, that got my eyes freaking wet. Pause. Uh, last episode, um, episode eight, last season. Yeah, Ted. Ted was almost number one after that episode. How he forgave Rebecca. Um, just beautiful. Just beautiful. Um so what was i saying roy that scene with roy freaking empowering um rebecca like letting her know that she deserved the moon and stars and not just okay freaking amazing i love that for her character too the scene of her in the restaurant breaking up with john beautiful like the 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 social commentary in there is heavy like it's massive i'm glad danny got over the tips tibs lids can't remember and obviously beard continued his uh freakiness and his freaky story with your freaky little ass um and yeah roy is really growing on me that beard though that man looks he looks handsome as fuck you know what i'm saying um anywho this episode was amazing thank you all for your support your kindness as always if you're watching this on youtube we will be way ahead on patreon so you can come join the gang on patreon but i feel like this episodes have been doing so well on youtube if it continues to do well i'll continue to throw up all those episodes on youtube you know what i'm saying so i appreciate you guys i'm glad my lip did not start bleeding super heavy on here but um I'll catch you next time. Adios. Episode 2, baby. I feel so warm and fuzzy anytime I'm about to watch an episode of Ted Lasso. But yeah, let's not waste any more time. Uh, let's check out episode 2. Season 2. Ted Lasso. So many twos. They're going to focus on this Love Island shit the with Jamie. At home has voted. Better call your name, mate. Tell us to put the kettle on. Jamie's going home, isn't he? Jamie. <laughs> Fake tension. <laughs> the lust stops here. Ooh. Oh, Whoa, wow. That must have been rough. That's an absolute shocker. Unlucky, really. Aren't this uh, real life uh, TV show presenters? I think I've seen them before. I, I might be wrong. With us here in the studio, loser Jamie. Uh, easy, Philip. I'm not just a loser. I'm. Look, first things first. Will you keep your promise? I found out that George Harrison had died. I realised I had to stop waiting for life to begin. George Harrison died 20 years ago. Yeah, but I just found out. <laughs> There's people like Jamie out here, man. <laughs> like, their whole philosophy. Let me make sure Luffy is showing. Yeah, that's a king of the pirates right there. Um, <laughs> Mukibara. Let me know if you caught that in the comments. I will love you forever and ever. Um... But yeah, there's Jamie's out here, man, for real. Any thoughts on Jamie Tart and his future with Manchester City? That, no, he won't be coming back to Man City. <laughs> we wish him luck. <laughs> they were fans of the show. Is he coming back? Jamie's getting smacked this episode, right? And about Jamie, um, please, 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 I'm telling everybody, mostly on YouTube, Patreon is great, but... Please be aware of spoilers. I know sometimes we get excited about characters and shows and we like indirectly just spew spoilers. Um, and for someone like me who like going into movies and shows without knowing a single thing, like knowing where a character is leading might be a little telling. Now, this is a show that off jump, you just know that like every character is going to have some kind of 
character growth. We have seen it throughout season one, but with Jamie especially, uh, some people on YouTube were like really like going in about how I will come to love Jamie. And I don't know if I'm being picky to say like that's kind of like a spoiler, but just let me just let me get there when I get there. You feel me? So let's just be careful about um some uh, indirect or unintentional spoilers. Please, please, please. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, with the sad music playing. I'm gonna walk, mate. Yeah. Wow. You slept here last night. Why? Jane and I got in a fight last night. Another wild story. Not, we'll smell this. The Parisian bedroom. Well, a word. Uh oh, is he gonna go off on the guy? Yeah, come in. Come on, Nate. Did you put lavender scented fabric softener in the laundry? Yes, yes I did. Uh, my girlfriend loves lavender. Don't make changes that could throw off a player's headspace. Go, get out. <sighs> this is the second time. You want karma. Morning, Ted! Hey, Keely! Uh oh, is that big bad Roy Kent there? <laughs> He's not ready to come back yet. Okay. Hey, you know, mine is money, right? Hey, look who's here. Hey! Oh, she's rolling. She's rolling in style. Oh. <gasps> that's not a bike, that's a transformer. <laughs> that's a transformer. Still, you should have texted me first. That's 100% true. No, 1000% false. Mixed messages, my guy. No one wants you. What about a team in Spain or Germany? No. Okay, thank you. You weren't even speaking Spanish. Focus on your television career. This is Tracy. There's nothing I can do. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of clear that um, after season, after the episode about the spooky um, infirmary in season one, where he finally opened up about his abusive dad and, you know, some of his trauma. I'm like, oh, yeah yeah there's there's something here um i think you know a character that you just love to hate or hate to love however the saying goes them being the way they are are like a writer's freaking dream because then you can freaking break them down teach them lessons like teach them lessons like actual lessons not just uh put them through hell and now jamie like feeling on top of the world getting um rejected back to back not just from losing the show but also manchester united are like uh manchester city are like get the fuck out of here you know obviously i can tell he's gonna come back to the team but kind of like this show even though you can predict how something will go the way the show goes about it master class so i'm buckled in ten last of welcome wagon has arrived please don't barge in here like that i could have been in a session i'm sorry very fair is she gonna like them or that's very thoughtful coach Lasso. hey what's your favorite book that was widely insightful this is interesting what is and my answer is the fountainhead. I know a curveball, right? But I can explain. No, what you're doing here, connecting with new people. Mm-hmm. If it's okay with you, Coach Lasso, I'd like to observe training today. Damn. So everything's functioning. Yeah, no, of course. Damn. There's so much to say there. <laughs> I think probably through some recent live events, I kind of like found out. To some of you, this might be common sense, but like all our personalities come from somewhere i mean there's a whole uh discussion of like nature versus nurture that can be had here but all our personalities come from somewhere like if you have a kinder demeanor or you are more aggressive or uh if you're cold or you know quite stoic it all came from like somewhere and some of it is like trauma related you know and when someone calls you out like that and like disarm your like response not just your trauma response but like your coping like the different like characteristics you have that help you cope and get along with your everyday world like it can shatter your whole reality 
Because right there, she read him like a book. <laughs> I was like, I see what you're doing here. This is how you disarm people and like you get close to people you first uh, you newly met. And obviously, we saw how we work with Rebecca. Not saying it's a bad thing. It's genuine, but it's not like direct. And yeah, she just disarmed him. And the way... You can see his face again. The acting in this, in this, in this show, you can see his face. He's like, oh, and I think this reinforces his uh, dislike for like therapy and therapists, because like he said in the last episode, it just felt like they were like pointing and poking at him and all on on all the things he did wrong instead of listening to him. So, oof, I felt that one for him. Oof. I felt that one because all our like mechanisms that we use to like charm people and get closer to people when it doesn't work, oof, it can be a little shot at your ego a little bit. And yes, I am talking from experience. <laughs> Holy shit. Sorry, sorry. Higgins, I think it's very kind that you gave your office to Sharon. <laughs> but you really should have an office, preferably your own. What about Caroline in ad sales? No, she's going through a breakup. Plus, she's right next door to laughing Liam. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you ever been to a therapist, Rebecca? <laughs> what for? I can diagnose myself in a heartbeat. I thought being invulnerable would protect me, so I pushed people away for years, leading me directly to my greatest fear, being alone. I don't get it. Why pay someone to do what a friend should Introspection, do? Introspection, man. Uh, speaking of, you got anything you want to get off your chest? No. You? No. Oh, both of you need a session. Jamie? <clears throat> I'm, I'm not stalking you. I left Man City to do this reality TV show thing. Is that okay? You deleted my number. Yeah, we're not going to go past that like you didn't just say that. <laughs> Played a hell of a game, but you lost. Coach Kent, but then tough love never bothered me. You know, as long as I knew the coach gave a shit. Mm-hmm. Oi! It's been an honor coaching all of you. If he finds Jamie in his house... We lost! No. No. I don't... Kaylee? I don't even want to think... Kaylee, no. <laughs> Praise Jesus, it was not with Jamie. I'm like, Kaylee, no. Like, that is not... That is not your character right there. No. With your fingers? Hell yeah. Go off. No pun intended. If you guys have that dynamic with your relationship, absolutely. But Jamie, just the idea that it was with Jamie, fuck that. Now this motherfucker just watching. <laughs> what you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> with the headphones in is wild. Were you having a wank? <laughs> Show me. Come on, let me see. I'm announcing. <laughs> 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 the f this the is your king. I've been like that since you left football. Well, at my age, with a fuck me, I don't get to be a football player anymore. That's how it works. Before we get on to Jamie, I think I finally found out uh, Ted Lasso's secret sauce. They use comedy as a shell to transmit like some really deep shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like comedy is always like the, you know. I'm thinking of an analogy, but since I don't drink, it's hard to make. It's like the comedy is the chaser to deliver the like hard hitting, like emotional bits of it. Cause like this episode is like just this moment, like her like wanking to his presser, to his press conference. Like that's the humor there. But like it's real, like him being passionate and emotional, you know helps her situation gets her off you know what i'm saying so i like that though like just uh highlighting like just the importance of like vulnerability and being passionate about something obviously not just for wanking but you know we're humans let's let's feel so i like that a lot like they use humor to envelop a lot of beautiful messages fine <laughs> oh, i may will try it once go talk to mr lasso oh wow the toy soldier named him ted after ted danson all time great you know from cheers to anything i can help you with what are the chances were of me coming back to play for you richmond you burn a lot of bridges over there mm -hmm. yes why'd you do that reality show I did it to piss off my dad mm -hmm. what about you mm -hmm. was your old man like that 
No, my father was a lot harder on himself than he ever was on me. Mm. You're an amazing player, but I don't think it's a good idea. Wow, well, rejection number three. Optical illusion induced by your mistrust of her profession. Is Nate gonna complain? Bingo, Ringo. Oh, yep. is, it, is it pineapple in this? Is there an arc that's gonna go on there of um, Nate learning to... Uh, damn, my cat is really yanking at me. You wanna say hi to everyone? Mm. This is Gus, uh, with a short for humongous. Because when we got him, this mother was about <laughs> like 16 pounds or so. I'm recording right now. This is my son, yo. Talk to the Ted Lasso fandom, Gus. Oh, yeah, Nate. Is there going to be some kind of um, storyline of uh, Nate learning to appreciate his past like where he came from because he's been pretty hard on this dude uh the new hire last episode uh this episode couple of times i love it because they're giving nate something to do um while other characters are getting the focus for at least this earlier episode so like i love that uh style of writing for sure tyler in a busy parking lot oh so you think you can do better oh yeah come out here and do it then hey Sam, I'm just trying to help the team here. Bullshit. It's about Jamie, in it? You got something you want to talk about? All right, come on, talk to me. <laughs> I can't believe you're bringing Jamie back to the team. I saw the picture of you and him on Twitter. I mean, just because Jamie can score goals doesn't mean he deserves to be here. Let's go, Sam. Where to stand up? No teammate has ever made me feel as bad about myself as Jamie did. Okay, look, Sam, I understand you. I told Jamie it wasn't going to happen. Oh. Yeah, he stood up for oh, you. Now I feel awkward. I bet. Coach, I'm so sorry. It's okay, Sam. Very well handled, sir. Jeez. <laughs> In the gym. <laughs> no. Where what are you doing? Where'd his beard go? What if everyone thinks I'm shit? Since when do you care what people think? Mmm. Fucking Kent. Type what shit. Is Mr. Kent? Woo! That's what support feels like, man. You're Roy fucking Kent. <laughs> hey, Roy. Try not to get too emotional, yeah? That's his coach, right? In five seconds. His former oh. coach? Chris, was this a case where United won the match or that Chelsea lost it? United just had that... What kind of question is that? <laughs> I just thought of the infamous uh, Russell Westbrook um, interview, post-game interview, where uh, I think an interview asked him, like, Asked him, um, so Russell, did you guys lose this game or did they win it? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And my man was like, what the f? <laughs> and he just ended the interview right there. I'll, I'll, I'll try to put a clip in here if I can find it online. But I, I think that was a similar question. Like, did they lose it or did they win it? Like, he says, welcome, Roy. <clears throat> Right, um, what did you think? Did your former club play well? No, I thought they played like shit. Watching them, you'd never know they were playing at home. That's harsh, Roy. United's been on a good run recently. Who's a shit, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I have no excuse to play like you're afraid of it. Oh, yeah, he's blowing up. Let's go. <laughs> so we'd like to ask you to move in with us down here with my man, Nate. What do you say? Of course, of course, yeah, of course. It's not. Hey, someone's turned me back. No, no, no. Sam just reminded me that he himself has got a great dad. Not everyone has that. Mm. Them things we always talk about in sports, and shouldn't that apply to people too? Not beneath the lockers on the bench, man. Come on. Sorry. As canines, we're <laughs> supposed to lack opposable digits, but right now I'm going to ask you thumbs up or thumbs down. Diamond dogs. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hi. How'd it go? Felt good to be back around the game. Who? Good. Hey, there she is. Good night, Coach Lasso. Well, hey, come on, let her rip right now. Reading that email would just be like listening to a cover tune of your thoughts. I'd rather hear this tune for the first time from the original artist. There's a wonderful atmosphere here. All the employees are thoughtful and kind. Mm. And they actually listen to one another. You must have a lot on your mind. Decisions. You get a chance to sit down and talk about it all someday. Yeah, no, I look forward to that. Good night, Doc. Turf. Doctor, sorry. You can call me Doc. <laughs> I mean, that's been killing me. You saw Prince of Tides, my favorite book. 
Mm, I love the writing, like the callbacks and the way they write them getting closer and closer. Oh, it's winter. Luckily for Sam, huh. there's a photo shoot set up for Friday. Good for him. That young man deserves some recognition. Yeah. Bars. Hello. Hey, are you ready? Holy shit. This is gonna feel like betrayal, huh? That lasso talk to them first. Isn't that what you were doing with Higgins at the beginning of the episode? Like, talk to me before you make a decision. This is gonna be a bit shit, man. That's that's going to chill down my spine, not in a good way. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Jamie Todd. Like I said earlier, I feel like this is going to give Jamie a lot of uh, space and a lot of uh, room for growth. Because, I mean, I don't want to compare Jamie with, um, what was Rebecca's ex's name? Devil. <laughs> Someone called him Devil <laughs> on Patreon, and I was like, "Fits, yeah." Um, I don't want to compare them, but like, um, I did not really, I did not like Jamie. I think that was just a like personal bias, cause like, um, in my adult life, I have had to like stand up to a lot of men with a lot of crazy views but like i just have that bias when i see someone like fuming with like arrogance and you know their first second and third uh play on their playbook is to belittle anyone they can to like boost themselves up so like having some run-ins with a lot of men like that even people that were close to me like anytime I see a Jamie or that archetype of a person, oof, I get in like heavy, like defense mode. Not defense for me, more so like defend for like the people that usually fall victim to Jamie's or like people like that. So this episode was good because like this episode is like setting up a lot of things that will happen in the uh, future about like uh we're gonna feel for jamie but like is jamie going to also step up because i feel like accountability is so important it's like um you he's been through hell like the abuse and everything plays a significant role in why he's the way he is however like I feel like we get to a point in life where like the ball is now on our court with like the resources we have are we going to utilize those resources are we going to uh take the olive branch that has been passed to us you know to like help improve our situation that's that accountability part i feel like i'll be more impressed if jamie can take that part um and go with it i'm very excited for that roy kent man roy kent keeps climbing uh, Roy can't keep climbing um, the charts, man. He just becomes better and better. And that jump scare we almost had with Roy coming home and it seemed like him and Kaylee, uh, Jamie and Kaylee were up to something. I was, I was going to be so disappointed in her. Like, no, not after everything you've built with Roy. I love how she's helping Roy find his passion. Uh, again, you know, having a good support system is 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 so important. And um, Ted is slowly getting close to uh, Doc, <laughs> and I hope they have that session very soon because I I think that is going to bring a lot of us to our knees, man. Because like whatever conversation they have, I can see it being heavy. And at the end of this episode, I said betrayal because after Ted had this beautiful moment with Sam, 
like assuring Sam that like this person who bullied you so much, this person who abused you so much and made you feel the worst you've ever felt in this club is not coming back. Like I'm protecting you from him. He's not coming back. I told him no. To just see Jamie pop up on the field without any warning. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. You're going to have to be delicate with this one, Ted. Because just regular sweet talk won't get you out of this one. Because that feels like damn betrayal. Like, like, I don't feel Jamie earned it. You know what I'm saying? Even though Ted voted with his diamond dogs, diamond pack with his squad. I don't think Jamie didn't do anything to make us believe that he earned that position back on the team. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, I like the doctor as a new character and I feel like she's going to take this team to greater heights. I love that so much. Episode two done. We're almost there. This season is 12 episodes or 14, I believe. We'll get there in no time. If I pump out like three a week or like two a week, we'll be we'll be there soon. I uh, appreciate y'all for watching as always. It's fun knowing that anything I'm saying in this reaction are landing on wonderful, careful ears and hearts. Like from our interactions in the comments, you guys always show me that uh you guys are a safe space for me to like share and converse and have these conversations um honestly if you guys like the way i do reactions and how i go deep into the uh stories uh i think i'm just half of the equation the other half is you guys because like you guys don't belittle me or blow me off or call me sentimental emotional or whatever bullshit sad people like to say about people like me like you guys are welcome in with what i'm giving so i appreciate it a lot thank you so much and um see you guys next time